uh, are the systems all go? Thank you. Yes. Um, I'd like to welcome you all this evening uh, to the, John, the annual John Dennis Memorial Lecture. You may know that John Dennis uh, trained at the school and was further involved for a period of some 27 years as a teacher, a council member, and eventually president. In the difficult days of 1970, when the school faced closure, he was dedicated to the ideas established in the A's educational tradition, and on his tragic death in an accident in 1973, his family and friends established an annual visiting lectureship in memory of his interest in education. There are three trustees of the fund, Michael Tree, Nigel Farrington, his partner, and Nicholas Dennis, his son. Uh, previous speakers in this series have included, amongst others, John Habrocken, uh, Anatole Kopp, Maurice Kulo, John Hayduck, Peter Eisenman, Paul Krishna Doshi, Richard Meyer, and Frank Geary last year. Uh, Peter Cook is going to say a few words by way of introduction for Sveri Fenn, who is our speaker this year. Peter. Sverafen lives on the edge of Europe in a very special sort of house. If you, there are no windows to the south, though the garden is to the south. Uh, but there are two very large windows, one from which you could see the sun rise over a hill, and the other from which you can see the sun setting over another hill. And it has a very strange and special atmosphere. It's a very sophisticated house. And the Fens, architect, husband, musician, wife, and son, live in this very special house. In fact, it's the, su it's the house of Sverre's old teacher, Arne Kosmo. And those of you who understand the curious ways in which 20th century architecture was almost a special religion in Europe, will understand the, the very curious situation of a strong and, and definite architect choosing to live in the house of his, of his teacher. Very curious. And you can understand the, the, the situation of a highly sophisticated modernist house, a special idiosyncratic house, in a remote, the edge point of, of really the, the European conversation. I, I talk about that because I think that everything of my experience about Fenn and his world and, and the aura that surrounds him calls to mind certain figures, some of whom I've never met because they were already dead, but certain figures who when you go to a place are there, and, and all who ever knew them over a 10, 20, 30, 40 year period will talk about them. I'm, 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 I think of, of Peter Smithson in this city, who has a very special aura and significance, and whom all kinds of, of his students, or, or people who maybe only met him for half an hour, will return to. I think of Egon Armen in Karlsruhe. I never met Armen, but you can't pass within two kilometers of Karlsruhe without being very aware of Ironman and, and the whole thing that, that still preoccupies anybody who came into contact with him. I think of Robin Boyd in, in Melbourne, who again I never met, but you can't be in Melbourne for more than a day without Boyd cropping up in the conversation over and over again. And this is so of, of, of Fenn in Oslo. I would say that almost every uh, architect under 45 either loves him or hates him, but very, very vast majority of them speak of him with, with great tenderness. And I know that in a recent lecture at the Institute of Architects, not only did 400 people turn up in Oslo, which is you know, virtually the whole population of architects in that city, <laughs> but 300 of them see, apparently were his ex-students from yesteryear to yesteryear. And I think this this is, this is, in a sense, by the way, 
But it, it's something which perhaps in a city like London or a city like New York, etc., or Tokyo, you, you don't get the sense of these things. You don't, in a sense, specialness is something almost uh, that, 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 is, that, is, that we don't talk about. Auras are things that are highly suspect, and, and influence is something which people work hard at, at, at retracting from. Kenneth Frampton, in the introduction to the recent Rizzoli book on Fenn's work, says that Fenn's critique of the object is suspended between artifact and memory, and then says about his passionate regard for the spirit at its time on earth. And I think particularly of, of, the, of the very special value that, that any interference with, with nature has in a country like Norway. That architecture isn't just something that is a commodity by the way of, of a rich and mixed and ongoing uh, culture. It's, it's actually to do with survival. It's to do with the, the business of inventing and, and inventing ways to survive against a beautiful but actually hostile uh, country and wind and rain and dark and, and strange spooks in the night perhaps <laughs> and therefore it makes it makes me <laughs> thank you it makes me very much aware of, of why people in Norway speak of architecture in a rather quiet way and they don't use rhetoric, and they don't use a lot of uh, multi-layered reasons for things. In fact, very often they don't say anything about it at all. Uh, they are a quiet people, but under the, underneath that quietness is a tremendous determination. Fenn, on the other hand, isn't just a sort of country boy, far from it, and for 20 or more years has had a, a tremendous fascination with Italy. Not only his little stories which crop up in the book about Palladio, which cro Palladio crops up in his teaching over and over again, and he insists, as it would seem, on his students visiting the Palladian villas year by year by year. Also the fact that his first major building was curiously made in Italy, not in his home country, the, the pavilion in, in the Venice Biennale. A kind of calmness of the man from the north against the hype of the Venetian architectural conversations. But the other thing which is, which is nice, I think, was his friendship for some years with Carlo Scarpa in, in the years before he died. And I remember another little Fenn story about Scarpa being amazed that there were even architects in Norway at all. And when you think about Scarpa and you look at, at Fenn's work in the rebuilding of part of the historical museum in Oslo, you see a very direct connection, a connection of technique, a connection of combining technique with materials and a discriminate sense of the theatre of historic objects. But much more, uh, one thinks again of Scarpa when you see Fenn's most important building, and there's no question of this, which is the Hamar Museum. But the other thing about the Hamar Museum is that it suddenly calls to mind Zaha Hadid. Now how, did that, how does one make that jump? Because you look at that ramp, you look at the, there's suddenly a heroic, vicious even, exciting, curious, angled thing that happens. And, and, and I, I've spoken so far of Fenn and his, his scene in terms of quiet, pitting your wits against nature. But suddenly in the Hamar Museum, Hamar Museum, you have a, a, a kind of attack situation. You realize that this quietly brooding uh, animal has, has teeth and claws and that he is in fact despite himself and despite his culture in the heroic tradition of 20th century architecture. Just one last thing about him is the experience of teaching with him where you where little is said between you necessarily but you sharpen your wits and Fenn, like Bernard Tumi, to mention another perhaps slightly incongruous figure, can make you stop in your tracks with only two words. I also hope that he will do a little bit of drawing this evening because it's a very essential part of his, his persona. Thank you.
Well, I thank you very much for this introduction. And uh, I am also very honored uh, by being here tonight. So thank you for that invitation. I remember we were three students uh, in 47 that was cycling from Newcastle to Genoa, Genoa and <laughs> to, to break out from, from our country after the war. And we had two magic points on our map. The one was AA and the other was the office of Corbusier. We succeeded in, uh, the, the door was open in, in the both, both, uh, both uh, establishment and uh, Corby was working with the uh, fence of the Marseille building. And, uh, uh, but here, when we went into this, uh, uh, this school, I remember one person, one student, he was sitting making one long wall and he <laughs> sits looking dreaming at me, not at me, uh, he was looking at the wall behind me. He don't see me at all. And he said, I love me. <laughs> <laughs> that was at that time. <laughs> but it was a very good memory. And um, uh, I, I was at that time also uh, <laughs> kind of <laughs> loving me. So my first building uh, actually, after gaining a competition of a museum at Hammer, it was a huge, big building in Oslo, and I was 24 years old for old age people. I mean, for for, and it was curious to face that problem at that age. So I started to to show my first work. It was together with Grung, but. Um, uh, it has some time, uh, some t I, I'm thinking of that building in my, my old age now. <laughs> Back to, 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 to that, that piece of work. What do I do? I do so. And uh, Oh, fine, thank you. <laughs> and when you see uh, uh, people of that age, you, you are thinking, oh, they are looking into their own shadow and, to, and it's not many steps left. And, they, and we decided, we had a beautiful site and we decided to, to look at the old age people, not in a romantic way, but in a more technical way, because it's, uh, it's three things that don't work on old people. That is the knee and the angle and the heart. And this is three, three factors that don't like the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> and so we decide this is out of the building. And uh, therefore, and, and uh, it was uh, an, a site of an old farm, and we, 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 we kept the old trees. So, and the plan was very simple. It was uh, a wall against the north and two gardens and room all over, uh, and room around the, oh yeah, I have to, and, 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 and rooms all, all over here, and here was the dining room and the, and the living room. Yeah, that is the plan, it's a very regular plan, but it's a model, of, and, and, and made for prefabrication, but at that time it was uh, no cranes in Norway either, Nothing. So it takes three years to build that building. <laughs> and uh, we were standing there without uh, any weapons. We were dreaming of prefabrication, but it was no, uh, it was done uh, as in, in, in the Middle Age. <laughs> next. But uh, my next work was uh, that I gained the. Um, the competition of the Brussels Pavilion for Norway uh, in the World Exhibition in '58, and here I, uh, that was the time of the '50s and the beginning of the prefabrication systems. So I gained the competition with a wall like that and a roof and some trans transparent 
uh, roofs here and two gardens there. But uh, we have to make that prefabricated. So I make some walls like that, uh, concrete walls, and in between that I put a, a piece of concrete and that, that take over the big beams that, that was placed as the, uh, the, the main construction. It's a very simple building and you enter here and you go through and out, out there. But in technical way, uh, I, 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 was, um, I was thinking, oh, what to do with this? I don't know. And it was two weeks left for me to, 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 to uh, what to do. And I was standing there and suddenly a man approached to the building site and said, I'm selling cocoon. What is that, I, think, I said. Oh, it's just to have a tread of cotton between the beams and then you have a pistol and shoot. And uh, <laughs> the, the stuff in the pistol coagulate and it makes this kind of, of um, material. And I said, oh my god, that is, I, 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 I was so glad and nearly, <laughs> nearly <laughs> throw myself into him, his, him. I said, okay, why not? But you can get what kind of color? Oh, no color, I said, no color. Just let it be what it is. And uh, that was that. And um, that, that was not he himself that, uh, that made the shooting, but it was a man from Siberia called, called Vladimir. And he was an excellent man with a pistol. <laughs> and, and I know all the nightclubs in Brussels at that time, and he was there uh, uh, <laughs> at the same time. But in the very morning, he was balancing here, shooting his cocoon. Uh, <laughs> Uh, on, the, on the roofing and, and made an excellent work. But, um, but that Vladimir was, was a wonderful person. Uh, the, added, the other technical experience we made, and that is important, uh, I, I was dreaming, oh, you know, if you have constructions like that, where there are a construction, it's a shadow or it's, it's no light. And, uh, here you have, and here you have the sun, here you have a bird, and here you have a cloud, and the sea. Uh, the, 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 the construction cut in pieces, you, you, they bedraw something from the nature, from your view, and it make, it create darkness. And at, I was thinking, oh, to reverse that thing, and to build the, the, the beams out of, of, of glass, not glass, but, but uh, of, of plastic. And we made some, some experience at home and they found out that this was quite, uh, quite resistant. It was in between uh, wood and concrete. So I decided to, to make some columns that was, uh, was that, so you, you reverse the whole architectural story and made the, 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 the thing that, that uh, 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 the structure was, was the, 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 the place where the light approach and you can uh, use this space whatever you like. But um, uh, that wasn't so well because you can take a piece of this and have an excellent uh, uh, good, good uh, Prove, but if you see all these things, some places here is not so good. So that was that has never been done before, and the dream is still a dream of making uh, constructions uh, that gives light. Um, yeah. Oh. Yeah. And uh, we made this uh, out of, of, of wooden beams like that, and I call this a very lazy construction. You just have a beam and support it like here. And the only thing that was interesting was that it was a little zero point here. 
that made it a little interesting, but it's a, it's a very lazy way of handling <laughs> construction. I will tell you a little about that later on. But um, it was a story about light, because we had three qualities of light that hit the object. That was that under the cocoon roofing, the one in the gardens, and the other one under an ordinary roof from the side. So it was three kind of light that hit the, the, the glass object or, or, or the, the thing we, we, we exhibit. The next, uh, this is also a competition that, uh, that I was lucky to gain, it's uh, that of Venice, the Pavilion of Venice. And um, it, uh, um, it was a story of, um, what is, I can make it a little, is that better? Yeah. No. <laughs> That's the story about some trees and the sun. Because uh, the, the, Biennale, uh, the Biennale at Ve in Venice, it's, it's uh, the only garden Venice has. So they are very uh, careful with all the trees. They, they was forbidden to cut the trees. And we had to build a building on the spot where we have some beautiful trees, and especially that one was, was a strong, beautiful. Um, and uh, so uh, this became a story of some trees and what to do with the trees that should go through a roof. And also the sun, because you couldn't have the sun going into all the paintings and, 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 and so we, we make a sunbreaker out of the roof by using this kind of, of, of concrete construction. It's six centimeters uh, thick. They are extremely thin and you have the you, you break the sun like that in both directions. It's going this direction and that direction. And that makes it possible to cut the, the roof wherever you like. And therefore we made an interior garden here that could uh, take the trees and that the garden would have an unbroken uh, an unbroken, uh, uh, what you see, an unbroken uh, uh, area of leaves. Yeah, this is just one big space, and uh, uh, it's, it's supported on one column. And that is the story of Venice with that column, because I found the, I found the people on the building spot one day, and they have washed the, the floor, and suddenly there was more water there than on the other places. And I said, oh my god, what's happening? And uh, that, was, that, was, that, that was happening, because all the buildings in Venice are sinking, and I was in the same, <laughs> in the same company, <laughs> because, because they had no technical date. The, in Venice. Yeah, okay, we can uh, phone Oslo and they said it's so and so, but uh, we phone Venice, but they have nothing. They, they just uh, look at the ground and say, okay, it's, it's, it's good enough. But it wasn't. And it was sinking. And, and, and I, uh, and I that at that time, was with all these sliding doors that was going. And it was only the builder himself and me that knows about that. And the opening day and the, uh, was very official, and the, and the, and the Pope has his own, um, own man, uh, cardinal or whatever it was. The, the, the little hat had a beautiful color. And he went up to me and said, my congratulations, it's a beautiful building. Oh, thank you, I said, and, and it was sinking still, <laughs> going down <laughs> into the earth. <laughs> And, 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 and we have a little thing to go on with all the sliding doors, but uh, okay, that was uh, a story of that building. But um, uh, it, uh, you see, the column went into a base like this, and they are very technical, uh, splendid in, in Italy. They, they, they uh, have a firm that 
that put down some kind of columns in the earth, and then the sinking stopped, and, uh, I, uh, and it's still there, that building. <laughs> and the sliding door is, is, is moving perfect still. So that was that. Yeah. And we, we honored this big tree. I mean, the main construction was huge and big and say, a whole, uh, hello. <laughs> you, you, I, I, I honored that, 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 the nature in that way. So, back to Oslo, and uh, now back to Norway. And, um, Peter said that we were a country with, a, with, with, with no light, and I, I agree. It's a country where the snow is covering the green grass in September. And you see, the only thing we have on all the time is that little lamp. <laughs> that is burning all the time. And, um, and in that way I was thinking of how to make a house in Norway. Uh, and I was thinking of the, 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 the bear. I mean, that is an animal that where the, there is summer all the time. Because when, the, when winter arrived, that little creature is going in, into a cave and, and fall asleep. And next spring he is out again. And the sun is shining and it has nothing to do with this world. So. I was thinking in the same way, why not make a house that have kind of caves that can, 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 uh, you can, you can work uh, in a house like, like the bear, you can, you can hide yourself from what is happening outside. And that, that was a house that was built in Sweden. And my first sketches were that, that you, you go into that and here you can, you can stay in the winter and moves out in the spring and say hello. <laughs> but I turn it around, this, this uh, niche, uh, this uh, caves, and, and make it in that way. And we have a, 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 a room in the middle with all the kitchen and bathrooms and so on, and the sleeping room, the living room, and the room for the children there. And we get a mechanism of one room that could be uh, uh, to be created into nine by sliding store from here to there. Suddenly you have one room here and the, 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 the service for the bathroom and so on direct to the sleeping place and here we have the connection with the kitchen from there to there and so and this was the corridor that makes this house like all other houses because from here you can reach all room, all kind of rooms. And um, yeah, and in that way you could you could play with the light. And what you play with was the sliding doors. You could completely uh, uh, hide from what's happening outside not by curtains and any other thing, but the house itself on that mechanism. And you see how it works. We, I have the luck to, to draw all the, all the furniture and, and, and uh, all the equipment there. But it was a corner that was, that was the heart of the, the, the house. And technically it was uh, fantastic. Uh, I, I was young at that time, and we have a door that goes like that, and this is for ventilation, and this is a sliding door that moves in there, and when it's closed there, you have the ventilation out to that, that part that are out, and you have this as a window, uh, or as uh, a place where the light could uh, run into the house. This is where the, where the door is closed, and the ventilation is there. And uh, this corner except and children. And it's, um, it's a story about children. When you, when you design houses, you always make a kind of, uh, a kind of uh, uh, 80 centimeter, whatever it is. And the child is nearly like that. 
And um, so they have to ask the grown-up people, what, what's the weather outside? <laughs> and the grown man said, oh, it's snow outside. It's snow outside. I, I like to see that. But they never see it. They, they are <laughs> seven years old, and then they are able to discover something. And the, and, and, and the parents can say, oh, so you see the cat? What cat? <laughs> and, I get, and I get very aggressive. I mean, there's, there's a base for, for attack. Uh, but if, it's, if you have the glass down like this, the, the child could, uh, could make uh, a conversation with you and, um, and say, tell you the parents that, oh, well, the cat is outside. Oh, is it? And then you have the other way. And I made, I have the picture uh, with me, but I made um, uh, uh, a school for deaf children, and there I made it even worse because I, I made a, a room like that, and the grown-up people was big as that, and this was a wall. And the little man was staying here, and he could say to that ma that fellow, well, <laughs> "It's raining." What? Is it raining? And, <laughs> and that person has to bend down like that and, and say, "Oh, it's raining." Well, Okay, and then that little fellow could raise his uh, back and say, oh, I, I, I'm grown up, I'm, <laughs> I'm really myself. Because every age has his, his, uh, his, his quality. His, uh, I mean, as an architect, you, have, you operate with an age from 24 to 45. That's what you work for. But it exists people from 24 to, to zero. To, to, to nothing, I mean the, the small one, has his, uh, his uh, uh, right for living, or right for living in, in a space, or have their own window, or have their own doors. So we do that, and it was a great quarrel <laughs> with the teachers, oh, because we favorite the child, the children. Yeah. And then that's the last uh, small houses I will show. No, it's not the last, but the one that I built near Oslo. And uh, Peter Cook mentioned that we, we are the only, I think, when you came to Denmark, and from Denmark to Sicily, all nature is cultivated. But uh, <laughs> in Norway, we have still um, uh, forests or wood that, that are make, has make their own story. I mean, they are not cultivated at all. And you have sometimes building uh, uh, sites that are not touched, untouched building sites. And I was so uh, glad that, that the owner of the house said, we don't touch this ground. So the, the workman has to go on small bridges, <laughs> not to destroy the blueberries. And that, that is uh, the house, and it's nearly the same plan as the North Köping house with a, with, a, with a kitchen and bathroom in the middle. But this is the important thing with that house. That is uh, the surroundings that was kept. This is the kitchen. And, um, and the whole house is made out of sliding doors, or every corner could be opened and disappeared. Uh, the, uh, I happens to be a friend to the, to the owner, and uh, uh, it's a fantastic work because the carpenter was an old boat builder, and I have another way of listening to the wood than, or, or to, to handle the wood than the usual carpenters. And the next house, if I uh, are lucky to, to, to build uh, another house uh, of wood, I would like to have a man that make violins because when he listened to the wood I mean he could even make a better quality than that one yeah this is the mechanism of the of the facade because uh, uh, winter and summer we have very few days that are really perfect and then this uh, that kind of days approach you have to open up the whole whole house and and to greet this special moments of these special days in the year. And these houses have, a, have an instrument that are able to, to, to make these moments uh, great, I mean, in a way. But I was a little tired of this, these houses with a, with a bathroom in the middle. So <laughs> I moved them out 
and maybe this is a competition that has never been built. But uh, and I have been in the Provia office, and he works with this as units, and he put them in the middle. But uh, I, I invent or, or, or thought that if they could make that as a prefabricated piece, they could add buy this as a as a fridge there and add to the to when the children when the children is growing up, or or even that could be bought and changed and bought by a new one. And the, it's a very little house, it's 80 square meter. Yeah, and that's just a section on drawings. But, um, but the bathroom, or that, uh, it's a very important room, is where you make your mask, and it's uh, where you are alone with yourself and the mirror. And um, you, you make yourself, uh, you, you, you put up, your, you go into your uniform after, and, and it's the bathroom that tells you about your age, you, 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 you're going bad, or you make your, make your little theater there. <laughs> so, um, and, uh, and uh, said to yourself, oh no, I am I'm a little better than that, and so on. But <laughs> thinking back, in old days, the plans was much more flexible because I was not prison into the into the um, into the water tubs or, or the water uh, was free. You 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 have a well here and you went into it with a bottle and you can place that bottle all over the house. Each room could be your bathroom. Each room could you, you be be on your own and it wasn't that that special room that should be for everybody. And uh, that was a little of the moral in this sophisticated house that we break to pieces the bathroom and said we wouldn't have any bathroom. We, we have the kitchen open and this is the tub, this is the wash and so on. Just the toilet was cached in, in the room but all the others was completely open. So we could, you could place yourself in the tub and have your conversation and hide behind the wall and make your, make your mask and out again. But this was uh, back to the old days where you have the, the, the possibilities to, to be social even in, in the way of washing yourself or have a shower or being uh, uh, at the fire. It was uh, designed for a composer in Sweden. <laughs> and here is uh, the... the the heart of the house, and he has a terrace that he walked up on on the roof because it was small houses all over. So he would like to be, be, for himself, in the roof garden. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, the nature and uh, that has two things. I mean, in the little Schreiner house, you have. The blueberries, you have the small trees and you haven't touched, mustn't touch anything. But you have a greater scale. And this is a, a, a project for a, a, a town near Oslo where they have, to have, a, have a, a, a kind of communication that went through the, the, the into the, into the um, uh, uh, mountain and down in, 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 in the town. And when the, when the town, when the, when the traffic went out of that uh, channel, it went out to the very top here. And we made this, um, uh, this is a uh, kind of architecture that follows the topo topography. I mean, uh, this, uh, the, that is the architect for this pavilion, not, not me, I see. I, I said, well, let, let uh, the building follow completely, nearly completely the design of the 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 the, the uh, uh, mountain or, or or the hill, because every every dream, every man's dream is that you have the slope here, and you are dreaming about standing like that. And, 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 and the architect has to help you, and therefore he helps you a little like that. And there you are. <laughs> Your dream is fulfilled. And that is 
the, the section of this this is a restaurant and it should be a hotel here and this is a big restaurant this is a kind of uh, uh, spo uh, restaurant for sports people and here is a swimming pool and so on so and you have your sauna down here and looking all the time looking out over the valley but some years later no sound 20 years later it was another competition for um, in near Oslo and the same time it's up in the hill and uh, that was for the doctors, the medicine people, that you have a hotel or a conference center. And it was a wonderful uh, site with a plateau here that wasn't nearly touched. And um, we were thinking, and the horizon, you could see all, all over Oslo and the Oslo Fjord. And it was 450 meters over the sea level. Uh, all, all of this was, 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 was a beautiful and, and what to do with that as an architect. And again, the same drawing, but now with other people. <laughs> it's not the lonely man looking out of the valley. But here, you have to make a hotel, and all the doctors have to sit working, I mean, and, and thinking of, of all the terrible disease, I mean, uh, or, or, or cancer, or, 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 or whatever could happen to you and looking out over the, uh, the valley. So the architecture was like that. You have the meeting room upstairs and the rooms like that. And there is the valley. And that was uh, the hotel room. And up here was all the conf conference rooms and, and the, the promenade looking out for, for them, for the horizon. So um, you see the, the, the plans and here is a room. And this is what, how to talk with, with, with the topography and how to talk with the, with the, with, um, with the formation of the, of the hill. Because you could, we, the, the, the society said to you, this should be a hotel with 280 rooms. That is the numbers. And you throw these numbers into the, into the nature. And what does that tell you? Then the conversation begins. And the conversation was so precise that we get that line. And when we move that like that, we get, two, no, we get 50 room more. We move it a little back, and we get less room. And this is the conversation with the numbers and the, and the, <coughs> and the, and the nature. It, it is a wonderful thing. And you can, you can have this point and the other point, and just with a little angle, you, you, you have other, other solutions, or uh, you could, you could uh, fulfill, the, I mean, you could make a little bigger program or a little smaller program. That is art. The other thing is that this plateau terrace, where we, I was talking of the beams that was made in Brussels, uh, here you decompose the wood construction to small pieces. And the one helps the other one uh, to, to make them smaller. I mean, here you touch that, and this is smaller, and that is, a, uh, is, 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 is not the whole span, but a little less. And so this is up, and when the snow is coming, it's pressing that down, and this is whipping up. So um, going up. So uh, then you get a mechanism that could take the, the, the horizon that beautiful horizon that, that uh, uh, I was so touched by that because beyond the horizon, I mean in front and beyond the horizon is, um, is uh, beyond the horizon is the mystery and in front is reality. I mean all the, all the folk stories and everything is behind the horizon. Next. Yeah, there is uh, the building. This is, uh, this is uh, the wood construction just put up onto that base that consists of all the rooms. Yeah, next, that is the main construction. This little one there. And I'm thinking, as, as I was a young man and I was an athlete, and we ended all over, uh, all over days by, by making a pyramid like that, 
and we were standing like that, and so, and the fat and the strong man was standing here, and the little man, at that time filled with tuberculosis, was on the top smiling with a little flag. It's a tragedy, but it's a, it's a way of how to construct with, with something here and there and there, and end up with a big man here. It's kind of thinking of the athletes. Yeah, no, and uh, facing the horizon and facing the, the, the unknown beyond the horizon, you happens to go into the history, and that was a great event for me. It was a great experience. And this is Hamar. It's an old town, and it's the, the only one that are in the country. All the population in Norway is around the coast. I mean, well, there are some fish and something, but no, no, no one had dared to enter into the, into the country. But suddenly, it, uh, it, it, it became a little town in the countryside that called Hamar, where the bishop lived. And here is the old town, and here is a, a church that is burned down, but that is the ruin of the church. And this is a barn that we had to construct the, the museum. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I have. Yeah, we can do it like that. And this is the old barn before we, we, we get into reconstructions. And the roof looks like an old horse. It was very tired. And, uh, <laughs> and we had to, uh, to rebuild that, uh, that, uh, that roof, but the stones that I say belongs to history in a way that we could, uh, could uh, uh, use as it was. We just took off the, off the plaster. And the plan was like that. We, th this has consisted of 20 horses. It was a very big big farm. It was so big that it was, own, it was an owner that was living in London. He has never seen that farm. But he was the owner and the, and the, and the farm was in the, in the stock market here in London. And he has 20 horses and cows and so on. And built upon the old bishop castle. And so that is, has been a, a Catholic center and it has been a big farm, barn for horses and cows and grains, and so I was asked to change the, 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 the building into a modern museum, or a museum, maybe. And what to, uh, what to do? It was a lot of ruins here, and I have still to dig in the earth to find new objects. So I, I, uh, uh, I decide to, to make a kind of hanging, suspending uh, museum that made of bridges that you enter through here and you walk up like that because when you are looking at ruins you can't see anything when you are staying on the ground but when you came up a little you see the formation and you can see the design of the houses and you, work, uh, you walk up like that and came to the third floor here or the second floor in, in English uh, where it's uh, small exhibitions, and then you go down and into this area that uh, is the Middle Age. And here is the Fox Museum. And the beautiful thing with a museum like that is that every object, everything you, you display, is made at that place. It's, it's, it's created in that light, and it's created by that people that lives around this, uh, this place. That is very important, I think. Yeah, and um, here you see the ramp. It's, uh, it's better now, but they have digged here and, and are finished, you know. And the section is like that, with the, with the, the ruins, the well. Uh, for, because the battle was not the battle of arrows or, bull, uh, or, 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 or bullets, but it was uh, a fight against fire. And so each house has to have a little well. So they could uh, protect themselves against the fire. Next. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
And it's interesting because it becomes actually more modern than, than if, you, if you get a site nearby and could start it without all these battles with the old ruins and the, the three layers. Because here is something that happens. This is another period and uh, that is the first period and so on and so on. And you have to add very little things to it. That is the bridge and that is the my constructions that hit the ground. This is the three small museum for millage objects and so and the administration on that part of the library. Yeah, I have uh, yeah, that is uh, ground plan. I have yeah, that is correct. And um, so I said it consists of, 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 of the Middle Age, that is the Middle Age, and, and the bridge, and into these small cabins. Yeah, this is, it's fantastic when you, you study this kind of history. It's on that little scale, because uh, the, it was the Swedes that attacked the Norwegian here. And the, the bishop, that was a Danish, uh, came from, from Greenland. He, he, <laughs> he uh, had a, a kind of uh, battle, uh, and, but when it was Sunday, he went under the ground here into his cathedral, where the Swedes were, and uh, had his, uh, his ceremony for the enemy. That was okay. And so he go back again as a, and continue his war. You couldn't, you, and that depends you know, of the whole Norway and what, what was the hand between Denmark and Sweden, what to do with the Norway. That was, it depend on that little man going up and down here and shooting some bullets over the, over the walls. And they couldn't fight, they couldn't fight when the grain, they had to fight in the, in the autumn because then they don't destroy the food. <laughs> <laughs> and in the summer, I don't do that sort of thing. This is a Fox Museum, and we are dealing with ramps. We move slow up like that. So when we move in a ramp, you could, besides of moving up, look at objects on the same time. It's a complete another rhythm. And this is the new wood construction that we put into the, the, the old walls. And the, the old walls was uh, holy, we couldn't touch them in any way. Or, or even in the electric lines we had to find other solutions in the technical detail. Yeah, this is uh, again the Fox Museum and we put wood and into the wood we put the concrete. That is. And the conversation with, 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 between the past and the... Um, and and the uh, present is very interesting. We used glass, we used concrete, and we used modern wood construction, and suddenly the conversation started with these walls and that wall. It's a beautiful thing, and I said to all this kind of sentimentality that, that is going on now, that if you, uh, if you uh, realize the present, or, or are, are, uh, you, you, you get in conversation with the past, if you try to run after the past, you will never reach it. I mean, you run and run and they, oh, they, the past is, <laughs> is <laughs> not telling you any secret in that way. But if you manifestate yourself and your time, then you have a base of uh, looking into the, the past. Here is uh, the administration part and the, and the auditorium. And that is a ramp that links to that, that construction. Yeah, that's a light on the staircase. Yeah, and this is a ramp that, that uh, moves in the, in the world of stones, old stones. And we, we, I, 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 it's a look at with the, the English eye over the Great Britain or with Europe as, as a whole. This is nothing. I mean, it's a, it's just a little piece of ruins. But uh, as we have all the time built in wood, 
and it's burned every thir uh, 13 years. It's been burned down all the towns. We are very proud of this little piece of memory from the Middle Age. <laughs> so it's very valuable for us. Yeah. As I say, into the, into the lecture hall. And I have a ramp here. This is the hall, and that is for the lecturing man that could move slow here, looking out, out, uh, out to the lake, the big lake that are in the near. Yeah, and as I said, um, this is uh, the electric system that we couldn't touch to the walls. We had to make our own construction, and the glass we just attached to the, the, to the stone. And we don't uh, make any kind of ordinary construction. We just have a bolt here. And I have a glass uh, worker that was a real artist because he, he, he made like a carpenter. He would draw the glass like that into the stones here <laughs> because we couldn't have all the birds running out and into the museum. <laughs> or thieves or whatever it is, small children are running on. So, so he really managed to, 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 to have that line in glass. I love him. He's, uh, he's still <laughs> my man, the glass. And um, thinking about, thinking of, of um, dimension, cultural dimension, or, 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 or fighting, with a little bullet and, and the arrows and the fire and the bishop. It was more centralized at that time than now. I mean, it takes, for, for Oslo, it takes 20 years or 25 years to have Beckett uh, played in Oslo. It play, uh, uh, from a play from Beckett. Uh, it's played 20 years ago in Paris and now it's in Oslo. It takes 20 years. But at that time, it was very, very centralized. And that little bishop, coming from Greenland, he walked down here to, and into his boat. And from there, he was rowing to Rome. It's fantastic. <laughs> and he came back again <laughs> with, with, with new impressions, with new, new thoughts, and, and, and really a vital uh, little man coming back from Rome here in his little rowing boat. Oh, it's, uh, it's dimensional, that. And what are they living, uh, what was their way of, 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 of survival? And that uh, is one of the richest part of, of, of Norway. So uh, they was living on, on the, on the uh, um, cultivating the, the earth. And what is this? Huh? You attack the earth with this kind of a weapon. It's fantastic. And that was the real weapon, how to cut the corn and to cut the grain. This is, this is that. And uh, they have a little too much grain. So they made uh, uh, aqua wheat. They made uh, liquor. <laughs> and they sell it. They get uh, exporting the aqua wheat. And, uh, well, how to exhibit or uh, this kind of bottles. They are not quite regular. So we have to invent this little bowl that could take all the, <laughs> all the uh, kind of, oh, uh, uninvented lines. <laughs> and, um, this is yeah, that is better, I think. Yeah. And that is for how they used, uh, they was drinking the liquor out of such bottles. This is into his pocket, and, uh, <laughs> and um, that is a, uh, I think he belongs to the church. He should be an angler or something. But he is very, very much 
<laughs> like a drinker or something. <laughs> and and, uh, and the technical man, the conservator, he worked and he loved that little man and he overworked him a little by, by making him uh, as good as he can. But they were so alike when they finished with their work. It took two years for him to, to prepare him for the museum. And then they were both like themselves. <laughs> Most of them the same face on both of them in the end <laughs> of the work. <laughs> and there, I, I, I have to, uh, to, to display uh, uh, four paintings. That was the whole collection. <laughs> and that was painted by uh, a man called Stoltenberg, an excellent uh, portrait painter. And uh, that is a priest. And you know, I have been philosophizing a little about what is the museum and how to make a portrait. And in that drama, you have three persons. You have the picture, that is that. You have the painter, I mean, uh, yeah, he's like that. Uh, yeah. And you have the object, that, the, the priest. Yeah. He's, uh, sitting, I think. So, that is the three people. That, and they are, that is important, they are in one room. With a light into them. And, they, and he created that man, and he created him very rough. I mean, I said, I have seen photos of that man, he's a kind man, he's doing nothing, no harm. But that's this man, is not, not <laughs> He is himself a terrible man, actually. <laughs> Not so kind as in the, uh, on the photos. But what's happening now? Yes. This man is analyzing that man and telling the story here. And so he finished his work and he disappeared. <laughs> he is out of that room. And back is the duel between the man that has been portrayed and the and um, and the picture. They have a duel uh, each day. Each day he grow, grew older and look at himself. Oh, that was at that time and so and so and what's it like that and so and so. The function of this picture is to analyze his cruelty or his uh, his uh, his um, his uh, his spirit in a way. And he must be a, a, quite a man to accept the painter's painting, if it's a good painting. But suddenly, he disappeared. The room is the same, but he's he's, he, he dies. What is left? Yes, <laughs> something happens. If the painting is good, the man that are, has been painted, he disappeared nearly. Uh, he is not coming back anymore. But in that door is coming the people that understand paintings. <laughs> that is, <laughs> this room has become a, a, a museum, suddenly. And the aesthetic people. Oh, look at that nose. And look at the color. What kind of color is it? Blue? No, it's not blue. It can be another color. It's mixed. Wonderful. <laughs> and, and who has painted that painting? It's Stoltenberg. Who was Stoltenberg? And Stoltenberg was a man, uh, he is famous now in Norway, but he was a man that to, 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 to have two weeks more in his life, he has to sell all his paintings, all his, his, uh, his uh, tubes and pencils and so on. And so he continued two more weeks and then he died. That is a, that is a painter. But he came, and, and this is a Stoltenberg. It's not a stable, that is the name of the priest, but it's a Stoltenberg. And it's hanging there. And in came all the others, groups of people that are looking at that, 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 that painting in this room. And that is a real museum because the, the painting is created in that room, in that light, and belongs to that room and that space. It's, it's a fantastic thing. But when you remove that, into another space, I mean into that barn, you have to do something. You can't, you can't hang, just 
hang that picture on the concrete wall. You have to have an intersection, and this is the intersection that we made to make a, a space between, to make a little story of, between the concrete wall and this priest. So that is the story about, uh, <laughs> about the museum, I think. And what, what has happened later on when they, uh, when they, when they went, when they don't, uh, as, as told by the, pa the painter, went into his private house and painted the man. But suddenly, the painters may, uh, made their atelier, they made their own fabrication, and the, the building became restless. I mean, if it, it, and the museum looks like uh, the atelier. They have to, to have a connection because the paintings is made in a special atmosphere with, with light from, from, from with the atelier lights and, um, uh, and, um, and created not to stay in that room and to move around. And the, 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 the picture are not happy enough if they don't try to get a space that are like that in the atelier. It's, it's, a, it's a piece that are, are searching for, for a space. Uh, it's, they are searching for space now. Uh, another thing is, when you deal with um, people that are digging in the ground and finding things, it's a fantastic thing because when you are dying, uh, the, uh, the first thing you are losing is your color. The next is your skin. And then is the flesh. And the rest of you is the hard things. It's your tooth and your, your what you call this, these things. And some small pieces you, you wear that are built of iron. The same with a wooden house. Uh, the, the wood is like that to disappear with the, with, the, with the ages. But it rests a little, a little piece on the door and so on. And suddenly you find this little piece of a silver finger in the ground. Um, and, 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 and it's a fantastic object. Uh, you, you, you think about when you, you dig you find just the hard things, but suddenly you find this kind of thing, and it's an old man's finger. It's, it has been used here. I mean, it's, a, it's, it's been touching thing all the time. And what is your job as an architect? What to do with this thing? You, 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 you have it in the ground, and you put it up and up, and what to do? How to stop? <laughs> then you have to stop, because this object has to meet the new light. And, and, and what and, and, and we, we we started and started and started and there we stopped with a with a finger <laughs> into the new light and I you uh, Peter mentioned Scarpa and I I, I I admire him very much but what kind of stories he made between this point and that point it's full of marble it's it's iron. It's concrete. It's, it's, a, it's a fantastic story to, to carry up a piece like that. He, he, he invents, he invents, and he, 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 what, what to do to meet uh, with the object, to meet the new light, or to meet um, the new reality from the from the. Yeah, and that is the bullets. And what to do with bullets? Uh, that is to exhibit it as calm as possible. And I am, <laughs> because the tragedy by, by, in the war isn't, when you have a duel, I mean the Berlin by Kubrick was fantastic because it described how a duel is, is, is going on. And when you have the box with the revolver and the, uh, and the bullets well prepared and you open it, and the people that should shoot uh, on each other, <laughs> they break. In that moment they break. But when that is over, they are shooting at each other. The, 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 the whole thing is, 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 is over because this is the silence before the, the war is, is, is broken out that are the, the very moment. And therefore, we, we make this exhibit of these stone bullets like that. And as a museum man, you don't like this um, key and, uh, and, and all these things. So we made a kind of secret system here, very primitive, but the assurance company accepted better than having a key because all the thieves can operate with keys, but they don't know about these things. And the, <laughs> and the, 
table. Yeah, and uh, uh, here we have the the church, the uh, the little cabin with the, with the object from the church. And I'm so lucky because this is painted grey, has it? And the face is cut in pieces. Hasn't it happened? It has been in Oslo. <laughs> because Oslo take all the big, uh, beautiful objects. But it still remains where it has belongs in, uh, at Hamar. Yeah. And. Um, That is another museum, but it's in, the, in Oslo itself. And uh, it's um, between the main building in Oslo. This is the old university building designed by Grosch or Schinkel is uh, the, the man behind it. And this, the other buildings is uh, National Gallery and the Historical Museum here. And the plan was to extend these two museums to a new, a new museum area in between. And what to do is two things that was important. That was to keep the old entrances. All the other projects made new entrances and the most terrible thing that happens a beautiful old building is when they made new entrances and lock the main door and said use another door. So our design was to, to, to use this is the entrance of the uh, geographic, no, the, the um, national, no, the historical museum. And uh, the other thing is to keep the city floor in function. So we build an, a, 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 a little gate, a, a little walkway here with an open air uh, uh, theater and going off there and combine this three building with bridges. And that made this walk possible. Yeah, and uh, that is the National Gallery's entrance. And you, you don't do anything, you just cut a little cut here. And it's uh, ready for it, it's nothing there. Here is decorations and everything. And the, the most terrible thing I proposed was, this is uh, the painting of Munch the sun and no the, the 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 people in Oslo could walk under the sun all the time because we cut under the under the paintings not in the painting but just under no what are you doing <coughs> what's that happening oh sorry yeah Yeah, and um, so I combined this building with walkway, and this was exactly where the staircases ended on each, on each, in each building. So we have a possibility to have the promenade in the Sunday like this, and you make it a little slope because then you are not alone in such a place. You see the other one moving up and down and in that way we also could make small museums here and the terraces was on very uh, uh, very height this and that one and so on so they land on on bases here and have small museum under there and they could also decompose the whole museum by making small galleries along this street and this is the concert hall. And the violinist is going down here into that space. Yeah. And that is the small bridges. And the ramps going down to the big space. Yeah, and then uh, we construct a small, yeah, you see the roof construction with the light in the middle here. So each section should work like a lamp. Yeah, and uh, we drew this uh, section through Oslo. 
and it's really the whole the whole town is in this section. Uh, that is all uh, intellectual life is on that line. Um, you have the theater cafe here, the National Theater there, and the old uh, concert hall here, and the new structure we add is that little things there, and a famous art gallery there. But what is important in this space in front here is it's, uh, it's that when the old professor should uh, uh, have a lecture in, that, in this hall and in this old museum, uh, no, uh, university building, the architect had been so generous to these people that this is a little slope here. And when he arrived here with his map, with his manuscript, and his heart is uh, nearly on the way out of him, and a breath. He has a little slope, so he is a young man when he uh, ended here and ran up this few stairs and into the lecture hall. Well, there are nobody there. <laughs> there are very few people there. But he had a little good moment just there, I think. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, it will be a lot of museums, and uh, this is nearly the last one. But it's um, another uh, place in Norway. It's up in the mountain um, where there are no trees anymore and they find copper there. And around that uh, copper they grow up a little town and a big church that could take all the inhabitants in one, in one Sunday. I mean, it's a place for everybody there. And uh, my, ta my, my job was to create a new museum there of all the small objects that are left uh, because uh, copper is, uh, is not uh, 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 valuable any longer and uh, the factory is burned down. But why is it, has it been a, a, a town here? Is it because of this little waterfall? that was able to, to get uh, a machinery going here so it could uh, draw out the copper and uh, uh, throw the iron away. Um, yeah. No, it's, uh, we should have another picture. Oh, look at that one. Well, that's okay. No. Forward. Forward for that. One more. Okay. Yeah, that's that. I remember that. That's not so very important, but it's a nice picture. <laughs> <laughs> it's described. It's described that kind of people. And and that is a he. That is okay. He is uh, in. in He's in good form, but they are very frightened of the camera. <laughs> but what I would say with this picture is that, that this, this timber and this way of building it was a little inspiring for that museum building. And when you move up in the, in the, in the landscape in Norway, the trees begin to be smaller and smaller and suddenly it's over when you come up to this kind of landscaping. But when you look at the houses that are built there, they are very small dimension uh, because of the, of the trees that are not of very big sizes. And that was the inspiring for this wood construction here that we use small, very small pieces of wood on a concrete bridge that we, we, we constructed over the, over the river here. You entrance, you made the same rhythm as the horse with the, with the copper that went into here and the, was fabricated there. And the people went into the same, in the same way and described the same way of moving as the copper was moving. I mean, uh, the same process was in the rhythm of the museum. And another thing is that when you build in a light like that, you have the snow and the sun is nearly like that. 
And so you work. If you see a waste uh, pottery in, in, in Greek, it's, it's like that. You have the shadow here. There. There it is. But if you see the same object up in that, uh, that area, it's nearly the opposite. You have the shadow here. <laughs> and, and the light is coming from that direction. Because the sun is uh, seven degrees. It's standing in the horizon all the time. And hit the ground and go up to the object. So it's, 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 it's a fantastic thing. And the people that create the object created it, this object in that, in, in that light. What to do with the building then? You have to calculate with that kind of light, even if it's a snow or it's a river. Um, you, you, you have to calculate with that. So the, the object is standing there, and the roofing is going like that, so the, the glasses or the window can catch that kind of light. And therefore, you see this, this, this kind of, of, of section. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a very small dimension. And uh, if you saw the plan, you had this wall uh, uh, a little like, like that. You have this, and you made the wall like that. And that makes it bigger room, smaller and smaller, and then back again. But it, it's not the, the uh, as a matter of fact, it's another reason for it too. Because I have two or three streets in the little town. And the streets is made uh, uh, beautifully because it's, it's made like that. So when you're standing here, you think it's a very, very long, long street with, with a long distance because it's like that. And are you standing in that position? It's a very narrow thing. You have the mountains nearly in, on, on your boots. So, so, so we, we were thinking a little about uh, because, uh, 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 this way of handling the, um, the urbanistic problem in the museum itself. And it happens another thing, that in the big room, we, get, we have a little light up here. You get the dark light, and when you, when, when you follow that wall, it diminished when the room was smaller. So you, you have it. It was a kind of conversation with the light and the wall and the street in the town and the people under the earth. This kind of, this little museum. Yeah. We tried to make, to photograph this uh, in that magic light <laughs> with the sun on, on seven degrees. It sometimes it reminds me about a boat, this little museum. But I haven't thought about that. But there is a boat. And um, what I'm going to tell you about now is my last competition was in, in Stockholm. And there they built, it was at that time that Sweden was, had conquered nearly the whole northern Europe and the northern part of Russia, and they were a, 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 a people of power. And they constructed a lot of boats, big boats. It's 350 years ago. And this kind of construction is uh, honored to the wood and to the, to, to the tree. It's a fantastic wood construction. And the whole England was, uh, was uh, cleaned out uh, with oaks and ended into, uh, into this, uh, uh, this world of wood that, uh, that conquered the rest of the world. But in Stockholm, they were so, uh, so, uh, they, they, they had this, this, the same name as the king, and it should be their really uh, great warship. And it was loaded with 560 sculptures and cannons and all kind of equipment. And when, the, and when this boat left the shipyard, it went 10 minutes far away. And then it 
it couldn't go any longer. It, it, fall, it, it, it uh, went like that and was sinking down into the deep. Goodbye with everything. <laughs> and 360 years later, a diver <laughs> or a, a, a man that was, uh, was uh, under, under ground, uh, underwater swimmer was swimming in the same area and suddenly he discovered that boat. And, and, and it was a great, great um, uh, uh, story about uh, that it was ec in excellent condition and they managed to get that boat up into the, into the landscape, I mean, up on the water. And what to do with such objects? That is, that, is, that is a problem. Uh, it's a site here with the Nordiska Museum, also the Nordic Museum. It's a huge, big building, and it's, um, it's a park here, and some boats for, uh, and, and, and places for boats there. But what to do? And we were thinking of that. The, the, the fantastic thing is the, the, pr uh, the, the preservation of that object that disappeared 360 years ago and the earth itself is really the big museum. And an object search for darkness, it search for, for night in a way. Uh, you, you can look at history, you can look at the, the China, what they find in China now, uh, six, seven thousand uh, soldiers of ceramic that they have dig down in the earth and given to the darkness and given to history and given to the earth and said goodbye to them. And I think it's a, it's a terrible thing to put this boat up on, into the grass and, and, <laughs> and making a new museum building that should conquer with that one and you have the whole story. This is a new building and the boat and you entered under the boat and the boat, you never are in such position to a boat that, that uh, under the, uh, on the, on the loan like that. So we decided to have, this, to have the boat on the same level that it was found 35 meters under the sea level, but put it in an old dock here. And again, we hated to make new entrances. So we, we, we used the, the, that building as the main entrance also for the boat that is here and make a museum building in the ground like that and a walkway into the boat that is situated there. And you just see this little light in the, in, in the, in the winter and say, oh, this, the museum is open. And everybody that are going and, 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 and using the park can go here and looking down and see, oh, oh, there is a boat. Yeah. Oh, it is still there. <laughs> yeah. So you see the sections. The section of the museum is like this. It's just the way, and, and the boat is in the old dock. We just make that dock a little deeper. That is the whole construction. So it's a very simple way of, of, of having the boat placed there. It's simpler than having it up on the grass. Yeah. And the construction of the museum is also a thing when you, you, when you use uh, that kind of technique, you have the liberty on, on this side. It's no building anymore. You can dig in here and the room can be made for the object completely like that. You make a niche for a small object, you can make a bigger thing for a bigger object and so and so. And it has no, no nothing, it's, it's a secret. It belongs to the, to the ground. But to have, uh, to have architects, I mean to have, this is, uh, this is earth. And what to do with the roofing? You can't touch that thing. I think it's, it's very, you can't put a construction laying over there, then it's, the whole thing is destroyed. But you have to have a beam here, along that route, that, that, that on, on a column here, 
and you make a little wood construction here that nearly touch the ground like that. Hey, that is it. And uh, the water is going like this in a, in a little, uh, the water on the, on the, on the glass is, is running here. And what happened when you think, uh, when you are thinking like that? Suddenly, these big beams is becoming the sail or the, on that is the mast. And the, the sun is been breaking into the, that white construction and sending their, sending their light into the, into the space and the ground. So you get a kind of conversation with the boat again. And we, have, we haven't been thinking of that. We have been more thinking of what I'm saying there than, oh, that, that is the mast and that is the, the white sail and so on. And, um, and uh, when, you, when you are playing with an object, it, I think it will be kind of excitement to go in this narrow gate with all the things from that period looking at you and suddenly you are in a tunnel without light and wow there is a boat and you are not a man that should enter from here you are a man that are in the mast at once and, and, and are catching the, the, the cotton or the sail or the mast or everything up here and move down along the side of the boat like that and into the, into the, uh, the uh, bottom area Yeah, and uh, this is uh, nearly my last thing I will show, and that is um, uh, the <coughs> historical museum. I have had that pleasure to deal with a middle-aged, beautiful object that is placed in Oslo. I get one room in this uh, building that are from the Jugend period in in Oslo, and I said to to the people, I I, I don't placed any object here uh, um, before you have reconstructed the color in that room as the old architect has had because the museum people had painted the whole room white and uh, without any nerve and any corresponding with the, with the ornament so we managed that and uh, get money for the gold and for the gray and white and this is uh, the state church entrances that they exhibit here. Yeah, and uh, of course, the same problem for an architect for a museum. You have no keys, neither here. And you have a little ring and, uh, up there that you can make a little story with, and then you can open that glass and come in and steal, but no. No thieves, thieves with, with discover that, I think. That is a man from Oslo, and, and, and this is a story, because this cat wasn't uh, very <laughs> important, but that one was. <laughs> it was so terrible that he is in the museum now. <laughs> but, but all the technique we, we use is, it can be put, this is made uh, in Italy. It's marble made in Italy and s shipped uh, back to Norway. And this is a glass man had made, and this is an iron factory. And, um, and the museum people can put it together. It's no, no, no difficult joint point. And, and that makes a complete other prices. You can use marble from Italy, you can use I iron, you can use whatever you use, uh, or whatever kind of quality you can imagine but it never reached a prize or a table <laughs> yeah there is that beautiful things this is the state church and um, we, we use steel because that is two things with the steel the one is that it differ so much from the wood and it's uh, it's had nothing to, to, to talk with, uh, with uh, walls or, or brick or, or so it's something in between this and it's also remained you a little about the knife the knife, this little steel weapon 
that have created this, this kind of sculpture out of a piece of wood. Yeah, and there is the gold. <coughs> And, and as I said, and I, 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 we have to build a new museum, they said to me when I entered. Why? Because the room is so ugly. We can't exhibit in this room. I said, this is the most beautiful room you ever have in Oslo, and it's designed by an excellent architect. And suddenly it was repainted, and I said, oh, what a room. <laughs> oh, what, what, what the lines, and so on. And, 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 and it, it, it was very easy to, to place this little little lady. And you think about Norway as a corner of Europe, a corner of civilization. But what kind of a corner? I mean, this is better than Matisse in a way. It's so gently done. And it's done by a little knife in the north part of Norway when we were a Catholic country. It's fantastic done. And um, that was missed, and I said, "Why? We 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 honour the missing pe uh, missing objects, so we put up these things and say, perhaps we'll find them or not, but we <laughs> we will remember them." Yeah, and that is his chairs. I, I constructed that out of steel too. Yeah. And again, we are a civilized country in a way. And that, that is that person that tells you about that. Because he is crucified by saying to the man that should hang on the cross, uh, that they should, should, should execute that thing, please give me my gloves. And, <laughs> and then you can go to your work. And he is hanging there with beautiful gloves and a little pearl in his, uh, in his uh, body. It's, it's, it's a f fabulous uh, man. But the other man, <laughs> that is also history, because he has been painted and has, has glorious eyes. I mean, he has, kind of, uh, uh, he has uh, before he has been a, a fantastic, uh, active man. But so he has lost his arm, and the color has gone out of his eyes, I know he has a bit like that, a little drunken. But, but he is still a fantastic sculpture, but with a, with a complete other expression. And that is beautiful with, 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 with such things of quality. You can, they can have their own story, and the time changed, and the expression changed. But it's, 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 uh, it's fabulous to, to, to look at whatever happens. Yeah, and that they put on the boats um, uh, in the in the and it's made of gold, and then it's put on the Viking ship or the merchant ships that runs away. And so I would end my my, my lecture with um, with that little church that we we had to build up in the north. It was the first prize project, but this has never been built because the waterwork. Uh, I mean, the, the way of getting fresh water and the church has the same price. So they choose fresh water. And uh, that is that. But it's, uh, it's a very north point in Norway. It's in Cap North, Honingsvåg. And it has an extremely rough climate. So we built up these concrete walls here and there. And in that way could protect the life inside the church and the life and also the construction. So the wood construction could be as, as, uh, um, as good as possible. I mean, you can use all kind of beautiful technique to, to really make the roof like a boat, more or less. That's it. And you, make a, you, you, put, you have a church like that and you put all the room inside like a little village. This is a room for the priest, this is something else, and so and so. And uh, these small rooms use the light twice. I mean, they use the church light once more. <laughs> but what we were thinking of, this is a little Viking ship. That uh, is it, fantastic, because when, 
when the engineering people deal with uh, with 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 um, with uh, the, the sea, that deal with the construction that are put on the, the up, uh, that put on life and death. I mean, if you make a mistake here as a carpenter, uh, these people is dying, and, and that make the construction so precise. And the challenge to the sea and the waves don't like any straight lines. It's all the lines are like the branches of the tree itself is it's, it's curled. It's, it's, it's fantastic section. And, and, and in that way, what to do with a fisherman that, um, that are out in the sea and the priest, oh, and the priest is a new, yeah, he's changed. And the priest is telling him about hell and heaven and uh, all that complicated intellectual uh, uh, stories. What do he do? Yeah, he is, he is raising his head and looking in the, to the roof. And in the roof, he in a way discover the, 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 the similar way of thinking of wood as in his own boat. Um, so he, he is on his own again into this strange room of, of, that is called a church. And what is his other important thing at sea? Uh, that is the mast. And, uh, and this is made of, and I have no wind problem, so we can make this out of wood, and this joint point we could also use. And so he can sit uh, near this column that remains his or his mast that save him. If the mast broke on the boat, he's, he's, he's over with him. Everything is gone. He never came home. So that is also a little thing that could uh, be something to be near when you are on a journey into, into hell or heaven or whatever they tell you about, whatever they talk about. Um, I, I was talking about the big boats, and I show a little drawings of the prefabrication of the pieces for these bo big boats. These are oak trees, and they, they mark these trees and cut them, and the form is following the tree's branches. Yeah, and I don't know why I show this picture, but this is from a, a, from a state church, and that is the part of the roof construction in my church. It's something similar. And uh, again, this is part of the, the exhibition in, 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 in Oslo, but it's a wood piece, and this is a column in the church. And so I am back to, to what I was talking about, about the mast. And it's something beautiful with the mast. Because the mast is a, the, the, the real big construction in, in the man's, mankind's history. Because it's the mast that carried the, the sails that catch the wind and gave us the globe, in a way, gave us, uh, us the earth. And. Uh, yeah, and um, yeah, oh, excuse, no, it's the other one, no, I, I'm doing wrong, wait a little, no, we have seen everything, <laughs> but uh, that doesn't matter so much. Uh, what I, I, I started my lesson with an old man looking in, into his very short future or looking into his, his shadows. But I ended with a crematorium that was designed in 51, uh, just after my finishing school. And this is a little story about what happens it's a little, and it's drawn a wall here, and this is uh, everyday life, and this is a tragic part of it. You enter by an opening here, not a door, but just an opening. 
So if you are a blind man or can see very little, you, you sense the draft of the opening. And what does that wall in Norway? Because we have that, but we, 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 don't, we don't have our own shadows. <laughs> because the sun or the, or the light are on such angle. So the shadows in the most of, 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 of the year is, is far away from us. So what to do when you are a lonely man missing your friend? This wall, this is facing south, could catch your shadow and the shadow and you yourself could follow the... Uh, oh, I should have a very good ending, but... Well, back again. There it is. Okay, that's enough. So the shadow could catch your, your uh, no. So the wall could catch your shadow, and you are not alone when you follow your friends to the last uh, journey. That is that is the end of the <laughs> of my talk. Is it this, uh, one more slide? I think it's not very important. Yeah, that is, uh, yeah, that is perhaps that I should have. With, uh, where you can mention the man walking with his own shadow on the precise scale. <laughs> I mean, when the sun is uh, straight, you get your precise uh, size, not on the ground, but on the wall itself. And there is, you are not lonely. Well, thank you very much for listening. Day. And uh, we feel sure that he'll be back in the first week of July, as he has been for the past three years as external examiner uh, of the school. Um, we feel privileged uh, to have seen um, his work, and it seems like a good idea from here on in to invite the rest of our external examiners to uh, uh, put themselves before us for inspection this way. Um, I'm sure that uh, you'd all like to thank Sven once again for coming to see us.